Baby shorties, how we doing? Welcome to our next video lesson on right triangle math. Today we're going to talk about the last of the trig ratios called the tangent ratio. So in our last video lesson, we focused on the sine ratio and the cosine ratio. And again, each of these is focusing on the relationship between the angles of a right triangle and the side lengths of a right triangle. Specifically, uh, it's going to relate based on any angle, the number of degrees that we have for an angle, and it's going to relate it to three sides. We have, again, based on each angle, the opposite side, adjacent side, not shown here, but also the hypotenuse. Uh, so we talked about sine and cosine are going to relate the opposite side and the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. And again, it, what it does is it gives you as a ratio, kind of like a percentage, so it's going to give you a decimal that represents a percent, and that percent is going to represent, or that decimal is going to represent what percent that side is compared to the other. Now, the tangent is going to be the one we save for the end because it is a little bit different in the two sides that it relates. The tangent is going to relate the opposite side and the adjacent side to the angle. So again, if I'm given angle A of this triangle, and angle A, again, is going to be measured in degrees that the tangent is going to relate the opposite side of that angle. So again, opposite is going to represent the side across from it. And it's going to compare that to the adjacent side. And again, it's going to compare this as a ratio opposite to the adjacent. So here's the visualization of the opposite compared to the adjacent. So as I move this red dot around, again, it's going to form a triangle uh, within it. So by increasing the angle and the angle again is what you're going to see in the bottom left hand corner towards the center of that circle you have the two arrows the green arrow represents the opposite side and the blue arrow represents the adjacent side so what the tangent is going to do is it's going to compare those two sides to each other what i want you to notice is that for small angles like i have here notice that the green arrow is going to be smaller than the blue arrow but eventually what happens is as I continue to make this angle bigger, eventually that green arrow is going to become longer than the blue arrow. So what happens is it's going to compare the two sides. Now while the why the tangent is a little bit tricky is because in this simulation it's comparing two things that are changing. Okay, As one gets bigger, the other is getting smaller. It's kind of that uh, inverse type relationship. There is a point, though, as we rotate it through, where those two sides are equal, and that would be exactly halfway of a 90-degree angle, which is 45. But again, the idea is it's comparing the opposite side and the adjacent side. So our goal for today is we're going to talk about first being able to write the tangent ratio, then use it like we did in the previous lesson to solve, and then we're going to do a real-life application of how tangent, as well as some of the other trig ratios, are important. So in this first example, what we're going to do is just, we're going to just practice writing and identifying the tangent ratio. So here it says we're going to find the tangent of S. So again, when you see tan, written short tan, that means tangent. And S means that we're going to find the tangent of angle S, which is right there. Now notice I am not giving you the degrees of what S is, but what I want to do is just be able to represent this as a ratio. So again, Based on what we just talked about, the tangent of any sort of angle is going to be the relationship of the opposite side compared to, my apologies there, the adjacent side. Okay, So based on angle S, we want to first identify the opposite and the adjacent side to S. So the opposite side, again, is always going to be across from. So if I were to draw an arrow straight across from S, that's going to represent 80. And the adjacent side is the one next to S. So in this case, I have two sides that squish S, 18 and 82. But remember, the adjacent side is never going to be the hypotenuse. So based on my 90 degree angle being right here, I know that this is my hypotenuse. So that means 82 must be my adjacent side. So the tangent of S as a ratio is going to be the ratio of the two sides, 80 compared to 18. All right, and notice that for that angle, that my opposite side is much bigger than 18. And again, all we're going to do is we're going to convert that into a decimal. So what it says here is that the tangent of S, if I were to take 80 divided by 18, I'm going to get 4 point, and it says here to round to 4 places. So I'm going to get 4 point, a whole bunch of 4s repeating, okay? Now, this is a little bit tricky, but think of this as a percent. 
a little bit sassy to visualize as a percent, but if I were to move this decimal over, we're looking at about 444%, which means that that opposite side is much, 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 much bigger uh, than that adjacent side. So percentage-wise, it gets a little tricky to understand this kind of like we did before, but it's the same kind of principle. Okay, so let's look at example B. We're going to find the tangent of J here. So J is this angle down here. Tangent is going to relate the opposite to the adjacent. So the opposite side would be 24. The adjacent side is going to be 32. And again, it's not going to be 40 because 40 is the hypotenuse across from that 90 degrees. So the tangent of J, J being that angle, is going to equal the ratio of 24, which is the opposite side, to the adjacent side, which is 32. Notice in this case how the opposite side is smaller than the adjacent side, and that's going to occur for small angles. But nevertheless, what we're going to do is we're going to write this as a ratio. So I'm just going to take 24 and divide it by 32, and it'll tell me that the tangent of J would equal 0.75, and that one just is a perfect decimal. And again, as a percentage, you can think of this as 75% that the opposite side is 75% of what the adjacent side is, and that's going to be for this small angle. Last example here, we're going to find the tangent of K. Tangent of K will equal the opposite side, which is 15, divided by the adjacent side, which is going to be 8. Again, the opposite side is going to be the one across from. The adjacent side is next to, and again, it's not going to be the hypotenuse, which is always across from the 90. So then all I want to do is take 15 then and divide it by 8, and that's going to give me a decimal. So in this case, the tangent of K is going to equal 1.875. So you can think of that as 187% if I were to move that decimal place over. Okay, so it's kind of the same idea, but again, our decimals are going to be a little bit different. So thinking of it as a percent is a little bit more challenging in this case for the tangent. Now, just like we did before, our goal, our whole purpose for this is to be able to use these trig ratios to solve for unknown. So in this case, where it's important is to use the trig ratios to solve for the unknown side. So like our previous examples, the tangent is going to relate the angle to the opposite side and the adjacent side. So in this case, look at example one, I've given the angle of 32 degrees, you're given 11 and you're given X. So based on this angle, I know that 11 is the opposite side and that X is the adjacent side. I'll just put O and A there. So tangent of my angle, 32 degrees, is gonna relate the opposite side, which is 11, to my adjacent side, which is X. Now again, the tangent of 32 is going to give you that decimal that we saw in our previous example. It's going to give you a percent. What we need to do is just simply take tangent of 32 and plug it into our calculator. And again, our calculators are designed that when you're using sine, cosine, or tangent, that given the angle, they're designed to give you that percent. So if you were to plug this into your calculator, you're going to get about 0.62. Think of that as about 62%. Now, in this case, it's saying that the opposite side is 62% of the adjacent side. Now, this problem, how we're going to solve this is a little bit different, because notice the thing that I'm solving for, my x is in the denominator. So, this is a little bit tricky algebraically, but the idea, the principle is still the same, is that my opposite side, which is 11, is 62% of my adjacent side, so we're trying to find the whole or the larger of the two sides. Now, algebraically, if I ever have x in the denominator, how do I solve this? So to solve this, what we need to do is we need to get x out of the denominator. To do that, I'm going to do inverse operations. So when I see x in the denominator, that means I'm dividing by x. So to cancel that out, I'm going to multiply that side by x, but I'm also going to multiply the left side by x. I'm sorry, I ran out of space here. All right, so what I'm going to get is this. I'm going to get x times 0 0.62 equals 11. And what I want to then do is I want to be able to figure out what x is. The last thing in order to solve is I'm going to divide both sides by 0.62. So it's a little bit different so that instead of multiplying that number by the percentage, in this case, I'm actually dividing 11 by 0.62. If I were to do that, 
I'm going to get about 17.6. And again, pay attention, especially when you get to your practice, pay attention to what they're asking you to round to. Again, you could be asked to round to the tenths, to the hundredths, might ask you to write exact answers. In this case, we're not going to get an exact answer, so I'm just going to round it to that decimal of 17.6. So again, what we did here is we used the tangent to try and solve for x, but notice where x was was a little bit different. Same thing in the second example. Here's my angle 56. So tangent's going to relate that to the opposite side. Sorry about that. So the opposite side would be x. The adjacent side would be 13. So when I write this out, the tangent of my angle 56 degrees is going to equal the ratio of the opposite, which is x, to the adjacent side, which is 13. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off first by taking the tangent of 56. Again, that's going to give you a decimal. So in this case, I get about 1.48. Now, 1.48 means that x is going to be 148% of 13. That's going to tell me now, because this number is bigger than 1, that's going to tell me that x is actually going to be larger than 13 and not smaller. Now to solve this one, because x is on top, what I'm going to do to solve this problem here is I'm going to multiply both sides by 13. So I'm going to take 13 times 1.48, and I will get my answer about 19.3. And again, 19.3 is going to be a rounded answer, and that there is rounding to the tenths. If I were to ask you to round to the hundredths, I would do two decimal points, it would be 19.27. All right, last example here, we're going to again try and find x. We're going to try and relate that to the angle given, which is 61. So tangent is going to relate the opposite side, which is 22, to the adjacent side, which is x. So I would have the tangent of my angle, 61 degrees, equals the opposite, 22, over x. So this is going to be very similar to our first example we did over here. The x, what we're solving for, is in the denominator. But nevertheless, the first thing we want to do is take the tangent of 61. Tangent of 61 is going to give me a decimal again, in this case, 1.80. And that's going to equal 22 over x. Now, 1.80 means that 22 is going to be larger than x. Okay? So to solve, x again is in the denominator. So this is where I have to do some tricks and trades. I got to get x out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x. So I would have x times 1.80 equals 22. So then I actually solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides by 1.80. That then will tell me when, again, multiple, or sorry, dividing 22 by that 1.8. I'm going to get an answer of 12.2. And again, 12.2 is my rounded answer. You get about 12.19 and, and so on and so on. But notice how 12.2 is going to be smaller than 22. And that's why you're getting here a decimal that's actually bigger than 1. So in this case, we use tangent very similar to how we did sine and cosine. But I wanted to set it up in a way that how, what you're solving for x might actually be in the denominator. Okay, But the principle here is that tangent along with sine and cosine, relate the angle to the side lengths. All right, what we're going to do in this last example is actually use the tangent, which again relates the angle to our opposite side and our adjacent side. But we're going to use the tangent to solve for the height of an unknown object. And this is actually a very useful application of the tangent ratio that if you know a certain information, you can actually find the height of a very, very tall object without actually measuring that object. Here's how it works. Let's say that I have this very tall tree that I want to measure its height. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the base of this tree and I'm going to walk away from it at a certain distance. And let's say that by doing so, now I'm standing right here. Okay, and what I'm then going to do is I'm going to look up to try and identify the tallest point on that tree. So the two things that I can easily measure is I can measure how far away I am from the base of the tree. I can also measure the angle I'm looking through to look at the tallest point of that tree. And using these two informations, the distance away from the tree and the angle, I can actually find the height of the tree. The reason why is because if you compare that angle to those sides, that we are looking for the opposite side and we're relating that to the adjacent side. So this is where the tangent comes into play. That if I know the tangent of that angle, 59 degrees, 
I can relate that to H, which is the opposite side, and compare that to 45. So again, it's taking that angle and relating it to the ratio of those two sides. So just like I've been doing in, in my calculator, I could take the tangent of 59. Tangent of 59 is going to give you a decimal. So I'm going to get about 1.66. So think of that as like 166%, which means that H is going to be much bigger than 45. Okay, It's a very tall tree. So I know then that that's going to be the related to the ratio of my height and the distance I walk. So if I want to solve, all I'm going to do is take that 1.66, and I'm going to multiply it by 45. And that's going to tell me then the height of the tree. By just multiplying those two numbers, I would know that the height of the tree in this case is going to be about 74.89. So we'll round that to about 75 feet. All right, so just by knowing the angle that I would be looking through to find the tallest point and by knowing the distance away from the base of that tree, I can use those two nuggets and the tangent ratio to solve for that height. So in this video lesson, we summarized that tangent ratio, which was the last of the trig ratios, very relatable to sine and cosine. Um, so what we're going to be doing in our next video lesson is relating all this stuff, Pythagorean theorem, sine, cosine, and tangent, um, but again, the whole purpose of these trig ratios is to relate the angle within a triangle to the lengths of the sides. So as always, if you guys got any questions, jot those things down. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Peace out.